Okay, Williams moves from the world of the women and brings us back to the world of the men. Steve tells a dirty joke. Jokes are, as we saw, the opening of the play, they're, they're, they're riddled through the play. It might be something to consider. And it's all on the joke of mass. The pun is on mass. And my ass, mass. So that it means both those things anyway. That's the joke. So they're joking. They're laughing. Uh, Steve's missed. Uh, the meal, Eunice is yelling at him. They're making plans for tomorrow. They're going to play poker at Mitch's. No, no, no. Let's, my mom's sick. We learn about that. Okay, fine. It's, it's at Stanley's, but you bring the beer. And then we get this amazing description of Stanley. And again, you know, in Williams takes the opportunity of stage direction not to just set the scene, but to draw the character, to give insight into what he thinks this character is, kind of what's below the surface, what informs the performance. He's very lyric and poetic. Um, sometimes almost over the top, I would say, uh, but I think it's quite amazing, actually. I just skip over it. And obviously, when you're watching the play, you don't have the stage directions. But having just rereading it now really gets so much insight into how Williams wants Stanley to be played. Strong, compact. He says he has an animal joy. He's, he's an animal in his movement and attitude. And then he's got this amazing thing. He says, since just his early manhood... At the center of his life are women. I mean, I think that's really crucial. And the pl not just women, but the pleasure with women, giving and taking a pleasure, not with weak indulgence dependently, but with power and pride. So he's not kind of like, you know, there's a man who puts women in their life and worships them or is dependent on them. Not Stanley at all. He is very much in control. And the way Williams uses to describe this is a richly feathered male bird among hens. He is prideful, boastful, confident, proud of his body, knows what he can get. Um, amazing. Along with this is his camaraderie in other aspects of his life. With men, his rough humor, good food and drink. He's all about the body, I think, is what Williams is trying to emphasize. Um, his, his, his body. And everything he owns has the emblem of a seed bearer. Gaudy, as in show off. Seed bearer, as in his virility, his, his power, his... This is a representation of everything that he can do and deserves. When he's talking with women, he sizes them up at a glance with sexual classifications, crude images flashing into his mind. Now, what's really interesting about this is nothing to see but the interior world of Stanley is painted for us here and I think it's quite remarkable and you know his beauty the beauty often of this role I think Gore Vidal said before um, Stanley Kowalski there wasn't a kind of male body um, or character who's who's a man who could be worshipped sexually and for his beauty and I think part of that has to do with Marlon Brando's performance of the first production and Elie Kazan's film version of it. Um, you know, all I have to think of is the, the first time I taught the play in Tower Hamlets uh, to a group of girls and showed a picture of Marlon Brando with his shirt off and to watch the stunned silence of these girls at the immense physical desirability of Brando. This is Stanley Kowalski. Okay? Stanley Kowalski repulses and draws us in. And it's essential about him. If you only see him as a villain, as a sexual predator, it doesn't work. 
if you only love him, oh, it's impossible only to love. I mean, I, I can't imagine that kind of reading of it. But, but it's 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 easy to fall into this trap of turning him into the villain of this play. He's not. He is definitely dark and bad, and is the is the engine of the evil. Let's say, uh, certainly of one strain of the play. But it's hit simultaneously his physical desirability along with that that makes him interesting. And he's just a fascinating character, uh, generally. So, she kind of means some very, very few words. Um, just wondering where Stella is. Again, when Brando plays this, he's chewing gum and mumbling the lines, but I think quite fantastically. Uh, he noticed litter, liquor goes fast. He's very observant. He picks up the bottle, like, you know, he knows, it's his bottle, he knows how much people are, and he offers a drink, no, 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 I rarely touch it, that iron, irony, lie, um, you get this trite flipping, some people rarely touch it, but it touches them often, um, I don't think he means anything by this, he's just trying to make a stupid joke, she tries to laugh. My clothes are sticking to me. Do you mind if I make myself comfortable? This is crucial now. When Brando plays it, I have to think about Brando always. He, he defined this role. Um, when he takes his shirt off and he's this um, specimen, this beautiful specimen of a man, um, he's supposed to draw the audience's desire. Whether he draws blanches or not is something that's very interesting. How is Blanche looking at him? How is she treating him? Uh, I think is, is, is very open, okay? It's complex and how you play that is also how you interpret her. How much sympathy you have for her or how much hatred you have for her. Can A lot of that can be in these kind of choices you play. Um, she says, yeah, yeah, it's fine. So there he is. He's been bowling. He calls it hard work hard um you know he says you're a teacher i wasn't i was i never was a very good english student you know not of the mind our stanley he is of the body for sure he is of the body and he gets right to it look how long are you here for you're gonna shack up here you're gonna you're gonna live with us uh yeah uh he seems okay with it. I mean, he's hot. he's he's direct about it. He says, "Look, don't worry about it. Yeah, take it easy. Stay." A cat screeches. Blanche springs up. She's so tetchy, just jumpy. Sick cats. Now again, the way Brando played that, he 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 echoed the screech to try and flirt with her, but also to kind of rile her up. Um, that's not in the script. It's something. It's a choice. It's something to think about. What is up with this cat screeching? Uh, I'm afraid he admits. I'll strike you as being the unrefined type. You know, I was saying earlier that Blanche knows herself, but he does too. He knows what class he's from. He's proud of it too. He's an American, Stanley Kowalski, the American, um, and he knows where they're from, and he wants to call it right away and. He says, look, you've been talked about a lot. You were married once. And then this music of the polka comes in. And this is the interior world of Blanche. And this is why, even though this is called, or you know, I think incorrectly by some a, a realist drama, actually we're within Blanche's mind. We the audience are in her mind. And when her marriage from the past comes up. It surges with memory, particularly musical memory, of when her husband committed suicide. And we'll find out all about that much later on. Um, but that music jumping up, penetrating through. Uh, and then very abruptly, she's, she won't get into the story, but she's, she feels like she's going to be sick. And in Gillian Anderson's recent production, at the, I think the old Vic, I think she vomits actually in the sink and we're thinking oh is this from the alcohol probably not she's a seasoned drinker is this just the memory what what exactly happens here it's a very abrupt end 
But it's well paced, I think, for Williams because he doesn't want the whole backstory. It's not, you know, what a waste if you're going to tell the whole backstory. AO2 structure, how you drip feed the story. Um, you know, we learn about what's happened to Alan only much later, like in scene seven, I think, with Mitch. Um, her growing antagonism with Stanley. Uh, the rape, of course, Stanley rapes her in scene 10. Uh, all of that set up now. Uh, it, it, you know, Williams is very well paced in this play. He wants to grab your attention and set you up. So here we have Stanley Kowalski, that amazing, amazingly detailed uh, description of his interior world. We have some sense of Blanche's, though Williams doesn't give us the whole story. Um, right from the start, we want to understand these three characters. I think you could probably say the most about Blanche. But here, I'd be interested, just initially, what are your thoughts on Stanley? How would you analyze those stage directions to give you a sense of Stanley?